I jumped the car back in Breaker's cut. Told myself I'd never come back. But well, shit. Here I am. This must be me. Oh, damn. Shouldn't have told Annie I'd come. Don't know how she tracked down my number. My strong, big sister. Crying into the phone. Oh well. It's moving slightly. I stooped to pull back the tarp. Poor old guy had hardly stirred the whole trip. Sleeping off one thing or another. Everything I need's in there, so not much. My phone, wallet, change of undies and shaving kit so I can freshen up when I need to. Plus the suit I borrowed for the funeral. I should let the poor guy sleep. I grabbed the tarp. I've been sleeping rough long enough to get a good night's kip, despite the diesel fumes and the noise. through the vents of the old reefer. City hasn't changed much in the last five years? Jeez, what am I gonna say to Sarah? Hey, sorry about, you know, disappearing for half a decade. <laughs> Jesus. Okay, time to ditch this old girl. I pull at the door and it doesn't budge. think so. Hey, give me a hand with this door. He mutters something under his breath, continues snoring. Bending down, I shake him by the shoulder. Hey, I fall back as the iron bar whistles past my face. Hey, watch it. Quiet, you'll get us killed again. You've lost it, mate. You have to help. He glances to the side, listening. You're right, I tried that, but it's no use. What? Think. Think. He continues muttering under his breath. Look, put it down. I'll put it through your skull. Think, think. He returns to muttering to himself, eyes darting about wildly. The guy's got a screw loose. Don't fancy my chances trying to grab that bar. I throw the tarp over the raving man, wrestling him to the ground. Dad, get it off! You don't know what you're doing! I gotta get out of here. Reaching down, I grab the hefty chunk of iron. I ponder giving the old guy a belt, but he can't do any harm all tangled up like that. I jam the bar into the frame, lean into it. The door gives way with a screech. Sudden, blinding light stabs at my eyes. I spin back behind the door. The old guy, having finally freed himself, is caught like a rabbit in headlights. What have you done? Ah, oh, shit. Security. The man looks around frantically. Relax. I've been caught freight hopping before and talked my way out of it. Hey, we're with Western Rail. <laughs> Jesus, what the hell? You've got to break the cycle. I can't... <laughs> Oh, God! Squinting into the light, I glimpse silhouettes of armed men, waiting and watching. Can't make out who they are, but not Metro Security, that's for sure. Bullets shatter past me as I drive across the doorway. Grabbing my pack, I throw open the hatch and leap into the blackness on the far side of the train. Then I'm tumbling down a steep siding, concrete rushing up to meet me. A 
alive here, looking at the sky, trying to process what just happened. I hear the distant sound of sirens, and above me, shouts, doors slamming, tires on gravel. Then silence. At least my phone's not busted. I pick it up, screen flashing a blurry photo of my sister. Annie? Mick, hey. Yeah, hey. How you doing? You in town yet? Can't wait to catch up. Uh, sure. Jeez, Mick, show some enthusiasm. We've got a funeral to plan. Same irrepressible Annie. You in town yet? When are you getting here? We need to go through Mum's things, find some photos for the wake. Did Uncle Phil call you? Uh, no. Did I need... Ah, never mind. You're staying at ours tonight, yeah? Have the address? Yeah. Off Cooper Street, right? No, Mick. Jesus, we moved like over a year ago. Ah, sorry. I... Angry beeps from my phone. You gotta break out of that head of yours, Mick. Talk to Sarah? Annie, my phone's gonna run out. Jesus, she's gonna be at the funeral, you know. You still haven't talked to her. I can't. I Just tell me your address. My battery. I know it's hard for you, but you're gonna have to face her. Annie, your address. Okay, okay, sorry. I know I shouldn't push you, but... I look down at my dead phone. Shit. No idea what her address is. How am I supposed to remember they'd moved? Uh, better find a way to ring her back. Pack must have caught something sharp on the way down. Ripped her right open. I fish out my phone's charge cable. The only thing worth salvaging. Bill? Is that you? Mick, what are you doing here? Bill used to hang out around the shelter where Sarah worked. Known him since I was a kid. Uh, back for a funeral. Mum, uh... Mum died. Oh, Mick. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's okay. Long time coming. She'd been... Um, she'd been sick for a while. You don't sound okay. I don't know. You're not staying at the pit anymore. The Pitt Street Homeless Support Center. I'd ended up there as a kid. It's where I met Sarah. She had to shut it down there. Oh, man. Why? Oh, you should know more than me. Surely Sarah told you. Sarah, my wife. I guess ex-wife now. I haven't talked to her in a long time. Since, you know. Oh, right. Jeez. Sorry, Mick. It's all right. I'm a bit shaken up, to be honest. Just been shot at up on the railway. Jesus, really? I thought that was some kids playing with fireworks. So what, some trigger-happy med officers? Couldn't be. They left when they heard sirens. Jesus, Mick. Yeah, I don't know. Hey, can I borrow your phone? I meant to stay at my sister's tonight. My battery's dead and don't have her address. Of course. Got her number? Shit. Look it up? No, uh, it'll be unlisted. Could call her practice, but she wouldn't be back in until after the funeral. Fuck, what am I gonna do? Let's see what the damage is. Electrics look okay. Smashed radiator, and a little low on wiper fluid. It's not going anywhere, but it should start. It stinks of petrol. They must have siphoned some to try and torch it. I glance around inside. No keys. But the lighter socket catches my eye. I think my phone charger has an adapter that it fit. I shake the can. Slosh of petrol at the bottom. Nothing but shuttered warehouses down there. I 
I should figure out where to go before wandering aimlessly. The metallic smell of old petrol stings my nostrils as it glugs into the tank. I toss the cigarette lighter and plug my phone into the socket. Nothing. Might only charge while the engine's running. God damn it. Good evening, sir. My name's Angela Grace. I write for the Herald. Can I ask your name? Okay, well, you don't have to tell me. Anyway, I really want to find out what it's like out here for you homeless. Unbelievable. Excuse me. Hello? Leave the poor guy alone. He's clearly asleep. Oh, hi. My name is Angela Grace. I write for the Herald. Can I ask your name? Uh, no. Kid like this shouldn't be out here. Not your problem, Nick. I really shouldn't get involved, but... Hey... So... Hi! Right. Uh, what are you doing down here? I write for the Herald. I really want to find out what it's like out here for you homeless. You... homeless? God help me. Okay, look. I'm not homeless, so... Oh, great. That's great. So how long have you been staying out here, Mr... Uh... Carter. And I'm not staying out here. Jesus, would you put that thing away? Sorry, sorry. Just a few questions. No! Loose panel on the side. I kick it open. Nothing but a random tangle of wires and tubes. I'll leave him be. You're here about the shooting? She looks up sharply. Shooting? What shooting? Don't get involved, Mick. Oh, uh, nothing. Must have misheard. No, I'm interviewing about all these homeless going missing. That or going crazy. Right. Another college kid thinks they can fix people. Don't suppose you have a portable phone charger? No. Wait, you have a phone? Uh, yeah. Guess you think just because I don't have a place to stay, I don't have a phone. Well, I don't... Everyone has a phone, lady. Look, Angela, was it? Go home to your warm bed. No one here has any reason to talk to you. I know that. I'm not stupid. She thrusts her hand in her pocket, pulls out a hotel-sized bottle of rum. Got a whole bunch. You look like you could use something to drink. Wow. About as sensitive as I'd expect from a rich city kid. Well, what do you want? Nothing. Just quit with the presumptuous attitude. These are people, not your high school project. I'm 24, and you're one to talk. Patronizing asshole. Whatever. What's with the car? <laughs> Kids joyriding, I guess. Can't even torch a car properly. <laughs> Still, it's my own private suite until they cut it off, eh? They leave the keys? Yeah. Need them? Sure. Might be able to charge my phone. Bill fishes the keys from one of his many pockets. Thanks. Leaning in, I try the key. The red charging light on my phone blinks on, but then the engine splutters and dies. It's still not firing. Better check the engine again. Okay, there must be something wrong under here. It sounded like no fuel was getting through. Damn, still can't see anything wrong. I think I need help with this engine. Mind hopping in? Sure. Okay, try it now. The engine turns over, and I see fuel stream from a hose beneath the engine. Ah, 
Here it is. What's the problem? Tearing the fuel line between the pressure regulator and injectors. Damn. Going to need a replacement. Thanks, Bill. Don't suppose you've seen any quarter-inch hose around? <laughs> <laughs> this ain't a hardware store. There's a bunch of junk in the underpass, though, eh? Could use that hose for the car. Come on, you asshole! Bloody thing screwed in there too tight. With this help? I glance up. Kid's holding an oversized hunting knife like it's a snake. Jesus! What are you doing carrying a knife like that? You know, protection. Jeez, all it's gonna do is get you stabbed. What's wrong with a whistle or pepper spray or something? I can look after myself. Whatever. Can I borrow it? Well, if you can answer my questions. Oh, God help me. Fine. Great. So, Mr... Carter. Right. So, Mr. Carter, what led you to be living down here? I'm not. So... Look, maybe I don't mind living rough. Maybe I prefer it to being tied down. But I work. I have places I can stay. I'm fine. Next question. Okay, well, surely you've noticed the recent spate of disappearances, not to mention the mental illness-related violent crimes. I'll stop you there. No, haven't heard a thing. You going to help me or not? Ugh, maybe I should ask Bill. Okay, what was that about mental illness? Cops say they're swamped with violent crimes, hobos going nuts, spouting gibberish. Seen anything like that? That guy in the rail car. No, sorry. Look, folks take what they can to help them through the night, and there's a lot of bad shit out there. You get kids acting crazy all the time. Yeah, yeah, I know all this. Give me something I can use, all right? Oh, uh, I'll ask around. Hey, Bill, you noticed any people acting weird recently? Well, I'm, I mean, yeah. You heard about the pit. All right. They shut it down? Yeah. Well, I was helping Sarah out there. She let me stay when there was a spare bed. That's Sarah for you. But people on the street been getting crazy, eh? Nothing new. Not like this, Mick. Everyone's scared. Solid blokes, you know? Fine one day. Next day, they're going nuts. Sarah ended up in hospital. Oh, Jesus. Well, she's all right, but couldn't keep the place open. I should have been there for her. Like she needed more reason to hate me. Some bad new gear people getting into? I don't know, Mick. I think this is something else, eh? Maybe a dumb question, but why is it so quiet down here? Malinji. Uh, what shadowy figures with burning eyes? Taking people in the night, folks calling them Malingi. Right. <laughs> well, that's the story going round. People have been going missing, but it's been a cold winter. I think that's all there is to it. He shrugs. I tell her what Bill said about the pit, and reluctantly, what I'd seen in the rail car. Thanks, this is great stuff. Just keep my name out of it. I asked around, and it does seem there's something to what you're saying. I knew it. Just stories getting shared. Some shadowy demon with glowing eyes dragging people off in the night. Malingi, they're calling it. Interesting. Nonsense is what it is. Typical tweaker shit. You want to publish that? Be my guest. Look, I answered your questions. Can I use that knife or what? Yeah, all right. She hands it to me wearily. You can have it back if you like, but honestly, you're more likely to get stabbed with it than without. I guess. Look, you seem all right, kid. Go talk to Bill, old guy out there. He loves a good yarn. Oh, thanks. I cringe at what Bill will think as she bounces off to talk to him. Got it. Hello? The K 
keys are gone. My charger. No! Get off me, you... Let me go! The hell? What's going on? Please! Jesus, they look like SAS or something. Ah! He's dragging the reporter to the boat. What do they want with her? Was she actually onto something? I think these are the guys that shot the old timer up at the railway. Shadowy figures with burning eyes. The Malingi. Shove from behind. Wait! Icy cold shocks me awake. Frozen. Can't move. Can't feel. I see only blackness. I don't think it'll work. I struggle, gasp in panic, and the blackness fills my lungs. Then I have no breath to scream. I try to fight it. Oh God, I try. But my body is unresponsive. Lifeless. The cold blackness that fills my lungs coils its way into my brain. And I know I am dying. Slowly, even the lack of sensation fades. Where there was nothing but blackness, now there is nothing. And I know, somehow, I am dead. But then... Every neuron in my brain firing, blasting out into eternity. My mind, torn by some immeasurable force, twisting out in all dimensions, then contracting, speed of light, back into nothing. Sudden icy cold shocks me awake. The same sensations, the same panic from minutes before. But this time, I remember to hold my breath. I can't get my hands free. I manage to work the knife from my back pocket and awkwardly saw through the ropes. Frantic, I feel about, but blinded, I'm helpless. I wrench the sack from my face. My eyes sting as I blink through the water, trying to get my bearings. Oh, God! Set to work on the rope, knife slipping in my hand. As I continue, my vision starts to dim, my lungs filling with fire. I realize I'm barely a quarter of the way through, and I'm not gonna make it. Hopeless, I return to soaring at my bonds. Black stars dance across my vision, but I keep at it, even as they expand. Obliterating consciousness, then primal impulse fills the vacuum, takes command of my lungs, forces them full of water. Again, I drown. Once more, the light. Reality breaking up, reforming back how it was, but somehow, wrong. Sudden icy cold shocks me awake. God. What is happening to me? I manage to work the knife from my back pocket and awkwardly saw through the ropes. I wrench the sack from my face. I set to work on the rope, knife slipping in my hand. As I continue, my vision starts to dim, my lungs filling with fire. I realize I'm barely a quarter of the way through, and I'm not going to make it. That won't help. Gotta get a hold of it first. I grab the jerry can as it sinks past. I push the tube up into the can, suck the water from it, and take a breath. I almost gag on the oily fumes, but I bought myself a few more seconds. Can't see how to make it work. I return to cutting with renewed strength. At last, the ropes give way. I kick to the surface, 
glimpse brutalist concrete rising from the chop and swim towards it. It takes the last of my strength, but I pull myself up the embankment. Before I collapse, I lie there, shivering in the bitter wind, trying to make sense of what's happened. I... died. They killed me. But I am no longer dead.